of the Holy Spirit is identified as a person and is also identified as God. Okay, Gene, number one, you're wrong. It's not identified as a person. You made a statement that I also found very comical. Hickory dickory duck, a mouse goes up to the thing and he goes, look at that! And very um, reminiscent of someone who doesn't really know what they're talking about when it comes to Greek. You said, in the Greek, the Holy Spirit is always referred to in the masculine pronoun, Gene, you don't know anything about the Greek language. No, you're right, I don't. So why would you make a statement like that that's lie? Because people who no, no, do not... No, no, no. Sir, no, I, explain, okay, I, I don't have to, know, know, I don't have to know the Greek I language to make a Let me explain my point. Sir, in the Greek language, the term for spirit is pneuma. It is in the neutered gender. It's not masculine, it's not feminine, it's neuter. I challenge you to find me one Greek pronoun that is referenced to pneuma, that is in the masculine, I'll even give you, or in the feminine. And there aren't any, Gene. So what you just said to that Jehovah Witness and to everybody uh, that listens to MP3 is a lie. Bring me a small liar. Small liar. Small liar. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I wasn't even there. I was at a friend's house. The check is in the mail. Like so that. you're denying that the Holy Spirit is a person. Sir, what I'm telling you is that according to the Greek language, in the Greek language, there are no masculine pronouns okay, but ever, that doesn't, that ever, doesn't, uh, ever, okay, ever fine. I'll, I'll, written I'll, with regards to pneuma. They I'll, are always neuter. I'll, I'll take your word at that. Among the many heretical views of the Jehovah's Witnesses is the teaching that the Holy Spirit is not a person. On page 20 in their brochure, Should You Believe in the Trinity, they define the Holy Spirit as a controlled force that Jehovah God uses to accomplish a variety of His purposes. To a certain extent, it can be likened to electricity. Now, in my first video, I clearly showed how the Athanasian Creed and the Bible, which is our final authority, teaches that the Holy Spirit is God. Hence, the Holy Spirit must be a person. But SOTB's argument is that there are no masculine pronouns okay, but that ever, doesn't, that ever, doesn't, uh, ever okay, fine. Uh, written I'll, I'll, with regards to pneuma. They I'll, are always neuter. I'll, I'll, Hmm, SOTB seems to be very sure of himself there. Now, while it is true that the word for spirit, pneuma, is a neuter noun, there are personal pronouns in reference to pneuma. In John 3, verse 8, we read, The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now, in our English translations, we cannot see this. However, if we go to the original Greek text, the word wind is the same Greek word for pneuma, which means spirit. So literally, in the Greek, the word wind is pneuma, spirit. In fact, Young's literal translation translates it this way. The spirit where he willeth doth blow, and his voice thou dost hear. But thou hast not known whence he cometh, and whether he goeth. Thus is everyone who hath been born of the spirit. Now notice the personal pronouns that Young's literal translation gives the Holy Spirit. It calls him a he. It says, his voice thou dost hear. But is there any justification for putting a personal pronoun in the text? The answer is yes, because the personal pronoun is in the Greek. In John 3, 8, the personal pronoun is the Greek word autos. 
And depending on its context and in its usage, it denotes a person. In fact, the King James Bible translates autos as him 1,952 times, his 1,084 times, he 252 times, her 242 times, they 121 times, himself 58 times. So SOTB is absolutely incorrect. He is in error when he says... In the Greek language, there are no masculine pronouns okay, but ever, that doesn't, that ever, doesn't, uh, ever, okay, ever fine. Uh, written I'll, I'll, with regards to pneuma. They uh, are always neuter. I'll, I'll, so clearly SOTB is in error because in John chapter 3, verse 8, there are personal pronouns in reference to... To Numa, in reference to the Holy Spirit. Now, later in the conversation, Pastor Gene attempts to help SOTB by showing him that the Holy Spirit is a person by going to 1 Corinthians 12 11. Okay, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. But the one and the same Spirit works all things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. This is speaking of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Back up now. What, no, what first now? First Corinthians twelve eleven says, "Okay, but all these operations are one and the same Spirit performs, making a distribution to each one respectively, just as it wills." Okay, what's your point? <laughs> what other translation besides the New World Translation translates it that way? A very valid question, Pastor Gene, and the answer is there aren't any. And it's interesting to note that there is a personal pronoun in the Greek in reference to the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, 11. Can you guess what that Greek word is? Autos. So here we have two examples of personal pronouns being referred to in reference to pneuma, to Spirit. The Holy Spirit is undeniably a person. Now, as the conversation progresses, SOTB tries to take Pastor Gene down a rabbit trail. He wants to get as far away from 1 Corinthians 12.11 as he possibly can because he sees that 1 Corinthians 12.11 totally destroys his theology. But what gets me is that SOTB claimed to have a Greek text in front of him and that the Greek pronoun, the personal pronoun, was not there. In fact, here is SOTB actually saying this. Here's an, uh, here's an instance where your Bible has zero evidence to translate the Spirit as He wills. Because, again, it's referring to a neuter noun, and there is no masculine pronoun He in the Greek text. I'm okay. looking at it right here in front of me. Now what I am asking my viewers who are Bible students to do is to put me to the test. I am not a Greek scholar. I do not pretend to be fluent in the uh, biblical languages. So I am open to correction. SOTB, however, deceives his opponents by creating the illusion that he is knowledgeable in Greek and Hebrew when he is not. In fact, I've asked SOTB many times, where did he learn Greek? What school did he go to? Who were his professors? He refuses to, he refuses to answer these questions because he is not learned in the Greek whatsoever. SOTB, I am praying for you, and you have heard the truth from me today.